Matthew chapter 16. One day the Pharisees and Sadducees came to test Jesus' claim by asking him to show them a miraculous sign from heaven. He replied, you know the saying, red sky at night means fair weather tomorrow, red sky in the morning means foul weather all day. You're good at reading the weather signs in the sky, but you can't read the obvious signs of the times. Only an evil, faithless generation would ask for a miraculous sign, but the only sign I will give them is the sign of the prophet Jonah. Then Jesus left them and went away. Later, after they crossed to the other side of the lake, the disciples discovered they'd forgotten to bring any food. Watch out, Jesus warned them. Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They decided he was saying this because they hadn't brought any bread. Jesus knew what they were thinking, and so he said, You have so little faith. Why are you worried about having no food? Won't you ever understand? Don't you remember the five thousand I fed with five loaves? And the baskets of food that were left over? Don't you remember the four thousand I fed with seven loaves? with baskets of food left over. How could you even think I was talking about food? So again I say, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then at last they understood that he wasn't speaking about yeast or bread, but about the false teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? Well, they replied, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah or or one of the other prophets. Then he asked them, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus replied, you are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my father in heaven has revealed this to you. You didn't learn this from any human being. Now I say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you lock on earth will be locked in heaven, whatever you open on earth will be opened in heaven. Then he sternly warned them not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. From then on, Jesus began to tell his disciples plainly that he had to go to Jerusalem and he told them what would happen to him there. He would suffer at the hands of the leaders and the leading priests and the teachers of religious law. He would be killed and he would be raised on the third day. But Peter took him aside and corrected him. Heaven forbid, Lord, he said, this will never happen to you. Jesus turned to Peter and said, Get away from me, Satan. You are a dangerous trap to me. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view and not from God's. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must put aside your selfish ambition, shoulder your cross and follow me. If you try to keep your life for yourself, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find true life. And how do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul in the process? Is anything worth more than your soul? For I, the Son of Man, will come in the glory of my Father with his angels and will judge all people according to their deeds. And I assure you that some of you standing here right now will not die before you see me, the Son of Man, coming in my kingdom. I just want to pick up three themes from this chapter today. Uh, Firstly, how do we interpret the signs of the times that we live in? Are we seeing things from a human point of view and not from God's? And how are we giving up our lives to find true life? Well, we, we talk a lot about the weather, don't we, in this country? And it looks as though people in Jesus' day did as well. But how do we interpret what Jesus says are the obvious signs of the times, the events going on around us and our world? A few years ago, Harry Styles sang a song entitled Sign of the Times. And the refrain in that song was, we gotta get away from here. 
Well, I don't agree with that sentiment. <laughs> as Christians, I think we're called to observe the times we live in and then respond to the prompting of God to do what we can to bring about change. As we try to read the signs of the times, we can react, we can pray, we can speak out using the keys of the kingdom that Jesus refers to in verse 19, that Jesus has released these keys from heaven to us, the church, for us to challenge injustice, evil, war, persecution and poverty. Well, what are those keys? We can make a stand for what we know to be right. We can demonstrate goodness in our lives to others. We can pray, particularly for peace in troubled lands. We can support those who are persecuted. We can give to those in need with generosity. We can speak out in whatever forums and social media in the public square we occupy. Look what Mr Bates has achieved. How I admire him for his perseverance. Then we read how poor old Peter tries his best to understand what Jesus was saying about his death. After receiving an amazing prophetic word from Jesus about him being the rock of the church, Peter then gets a real ticking off by Jesus in verse 23. Get away from me, Satan. You are a dangerous trap to me. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view and not from God's. Jesus was really clear. We have to be willing to give up our life just as he was going to in order to find true life. He's after our whole being, body and soul, and he will judge us, as it says in verse 27, according to our deeds. Well, that's a very sobering thought. But what does all this mean for you and me today? How can we see things more from a godly perspective rather than human thoughts and ideas? As the Apostle Paul said, we need to have the mind of Christ to take responsibility afresh for our lives and respond to the signs of the times in our world that ultimately point to the return of Jesus. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we pray for a release of your spirit to help us read the signs of the times, that we may pray more effectively, think more clearly and give or act to do what we can to change the injustices of our day. As we give up our lives afresh to serve the kingdom of God, may our actions not fall short when you pass judgment on our lives. Please help me to know your perspective on my challenges in life, that I may see life from a heavenly point of view and not just through human understanding. To the glory of God. Amen.